hello YouTube. Today I've got to start by giving you a warning actually. I'm going to be talking about toilet related matters. In other words, shit. So the reality is it's not the most glamorous part of motorhoming, but it is a reality and it needs dealing with. So there's my little bathroom that you can see. I had a chemical toilet in there but every time I needed to empty it, I had to get it out through that narrow door and take it through the van and out. And it was just difficult when it was heavy. It, it would be hard to get around the door and I'd have to take the top off the toilet in the cubicle. And so I persevered with that for some time and then thought, well, I'm a bit sick of this. And it needed emptying. It was very small, so it needed emptying every few days. So looking for a more practical option really, uh, I looked at compost toilets and um, I just took the plunge and, and went with it. And uh, when I decided to do that, I looked online and there are lots of options where you can buy a compost toilet, but they're really expensive. Um, and especially for what they are. So, you know, in the UK, we were looking at probably the cheapest was 250 pounds to maybe up to a thousand pounds and i just didn't want to spend that kind of money and uh, so essentially what well, a compost toilet is um, in terms of the ones i was looking to buy all it is is a bucket a clever bucket really and a clever piece of plastic to divert the liquid element uh, and a container to catch that so it separates the liquids and the solids so yeah i think you know what i mean by liquids and solids so i don't need to go into any gruesome detail i'll uh, show you some pictures rather than the toilet that's in use um as, as i'm speaking to you but the only concerns i did have was that it might smell and where would i get rid of the waste because you know, chemical toilets easy enough. You could use a public toilet or a campsite facility, but there aren't any facilities for compost waste. So I looked into it and I found out that legally you can put it into your rubbish at home. So if it's bagged up and put into your rubbish, then that's, that's fine. Um, but you'd have to check that with your own local authority. I'm just going based on what I found out in my area. Um, and I suppose that makes sense really, because people put babies' nappies in the waste bin and that. So that's one option. I didn't want to do that. The other option I thought of was you can line the bucket with bags, and then you can um, if you get biodegradable bags, so you can just put the bags into a compost heap, um, or you can just forget the bag altogether and just put the whole lot onto a compost heap, just tip it out. Um, or the other thing you can do, which is what I'm doing, you can just seal the bucket up once it's full and then um, just put that in your garden somewhere for 12 months and after 12 months you'll empty it and it'll be soil. While on the road though, if I was doing it full time, I don't know how I would get rid of that waste as easily. Um, I mean, I've seen those dog litter bins around places, I suppose you could even use them at a push. Um, you could probably take it to the local, uh, you know, waste management facility in the local area. But I don't really know. I mean, it, it works for me. It might not work for somebody doing this full time. Um, would it go back to chemical? Well, I'm not saying I wouldn't. Um, but the reason I haven't done it, I won't go back with this van, is because of the space restrictions. If I'd thought about it before I set the van up, I would have created um, an external emptying hatch like there are on most motorhomes. And I think that might have made things much easier and possibly changed my opinion on the whole chemical toilet situation. Now I've set it up, I do like the compost toilet option because it doesn't smell. Um, and it does. I can use it for a long time without having to worry about replacing the buckets. Um, so as you'll see from the pictures I'm putting up now, basically I use these standard buckets and these I think these are 10 litres or something like that and they're only they're quite shallow so I put one on top of another which means I've always got a spare as well. 
and then I've got to have the sawdust um, because basically you do your business um, as normal and then you just cover it with sawdust uh, and that's what keeps the odor in and uh, doesn't you know stops the smell um, and aside to that as well there's an external fan that goes out on a pipe under the van and there's just a small computer fan that keeps the air flowing constantly you just keep that on and there isn't any odor at all so that's the solids um, but then for the liquids well they just get filtered down this big funnel uh, that you can see on the picture uh, and into a five litre water container clearly it's never going to be used for water now but um, it is used for, for catching the liquids and then you can just empty the liquid into the grass or you know anywhere outside where it will soak away or you can just tip that down a toilet and use it at a public toilet so that needs emptying every couple of days and um, but the solid part of it will be like two to three weeks for myself um, that will probably vary depending on you know what size bucket you use how many people are using it and uh, your diets and all kinds of things so essentially that's it it's a box with a toilet seat on it carefully arranged buckets and a funnel and, and that's as technical as it gets uh, in terms of cost I don't know probably less than £20 something like that um, I've, I've used wood which is a funny thing to use in a shower compartment but it's got um, fiberglass resin on it to make it waterproof I still need to finish it off because it all needs to be white really to match in with everything so I hope that was helpful and interesting to somebody and if you've got any comments please leave them and uh, please like and subscribe and hopefully that wasn't too graphic and too disturbing thank you very much